she must rule out no deal. We will not believe she is serious about the interests of the country if she doesn't. Why? The Minister is asking me why. Why? Because last week I had a constituent on the phone whose son was in line for a clinical trial that could save his life in the European Union that doesn't know now whether he would get it. This is a child who has no certainty about what is going to happen next. I have a constituent who's on dialysis who rang me to say she's been told to, to wait for some disruption in the event of no deal. When I went to the Minister to ask what the advice was, he said, we're doing our best but we can't make any guarantees. My sister is diabetic and hasn't slept for months because she doesn't know whether she'll be able to access insulin. Now, you can accuse me of scaremongering all you like, but the government's own technical notice cannot tell us what will happen in the event of a no-deal Brexit. What sort of government cannot guarantee access to medicines for its citizens in just a week's time? I will. To make the point gently to the Honourable Lady that there was a written ministerial statement uh, that did make those guarantees only, two, only three weeks ago. I remember that I was here on Monday when we were debating plans to allow pharmacists to limit access to medication in the event of no deal in just a few weeks' time. And you know, I went to my local pharmacist and had a conversation with him a couple of days later, and he'd never heard anything about it. So to pretend that this is a responsible course of action, frankly, it's a disgrace. And he can roll his eyes at me all he likes, but this is an absolute disgrace. They have driven this country to a brink, and they are not learning and every member sitting in this house right now will look at that minister sitting on that bench and realise that this is a government that is not serious about safeguarding the welfare of its citizens. And I'll just say, I'll finish with this because I know that there are many members who are desperate to speak. In the next stages, if we get to the next stages, if this shabby government somehow manages to cobble together a majority for the withdrawal agreement and get us into the next stages, I would just say to honourable members, look at what you've just witnessed in this House. Do not trust that they are, they are acting with the interests of the whole country in mind. This House has got no guaranteed role in those next stages of negotiations. If we do not insist on that right now, we will not get it. For four months I've been talking to the Prime Minister and to members of the government side about giving Parliament the right to set out the terms of the negotiating mandate in the next stages and to guarantee a vote about the future relationship at the end of that process. They have resisted that and that is why my honourable friend yeah. and I, the member for Stoke Central, will be bringing forward an amendment when this meaningful vote materialises because we have got to have a reset. If we are going to get to the next stages of those discussions, then that discussion has to involve every single part of this House. We cannot allow the Prime Minister, whoever he or she may be by that point, to go off and negotiate away our rights and our freedoms and our protections that have been hard fought for for 100 years without any say in what that is. Mr Speaker, this has become a tug of war between two groups of people, actually, that when I speak to them every day in my constituency are quite reasonable people who would like to see this resolved. We are breaking our democracy, and that is why I commend my honourable, the honourable member, the member for West Dorset, for Amendment A, because he is seeking a way to come together and compromise and find a way through this impasse, and we as a House have to rise to the occasion because, my God, I have just seen a perfect example from the government benches that they are simply not going to do it.